During the last Georgia State SGA meeting, two new executive orders were passed that could have a direct impact on the student body. SGA President Kaylin Thomas is excited about the new executive orders and wants to see the positive effect they could have on the university. So this semester, two big things that students should be on the lookout for. Um, two things that came to the Senate, the university-wide Senate on January 28th, uh, was legislation for a constitutional amendment to add an amendment to the ballot um, as a referendum to students. And essentially what that constitutional amendment is trying to do is to pull out uh, portions of the bylaws that relate to how our senates are structured and place those portions in the bylaws so that if there are any changes we ever need to make to how the senate is structured, we won't have to go to the university to the entire student body essentially for a referendum every time. The Student Government Association are also working on implementing a new system called Rank Choice Voting. This system has the potential to be revolutionary in the way students at Georgia State University will vote for their student body representatives in the future. So in this system, students would essentially not lose their vote if their candidate does not win and they still have an opportunity to vote for someone who is um, essentially their favorite. Um, it also pretty much eliminates negative campaigning, although uh, mudslinging and things like that are prohibited by the election commission in our election code. Uh, this would just make sure that all candidates are working just as hard to win over voters on all sides of the aisle because if you're not that first place vote for someone you want to make sure that you're that second place vote for someone else the student government association are always working to ensure that sga and the georgia state university will always have new laws coming in that could possibly benefit the way the student body is ran at georgia state university antoine willis prn Just eight months ago, a Georgia State student, Perry Lennon, started her own nonprofit organization called Cruise for a Cause that highlights the struggles of society through the arrangement of mobile events. I at home and watching all of the protests right after George Floyd's death, and I just knew I couldn't go out there because of COVID and my dad is high risk. So I kind of had to create my own system and way to express my opinion without being exposed to COVID. Cruz for Cause was initially founded on the basis in the matters of police brutality and things of that sort and racial inequality. But um, since then, we've also done voting rides, not just vote blue, but we've done voting rides for just vote. Just get your voice out there, just go to the polls and let your voice be heard. To keep Cruz for a Cause alive, Perry has not let anything stop her from making sure everyone's voice is heard. Knowing that my ancestors have fought so hard and they went through so much to get me to where I could be able to do Cruise for a Cause. And also knowing that Cruise for a Cause is a peaceful, safe way to protest. We have people with permits that allow us to, you know, go through stoplights and stuff like that. Um, just keeps me motivated and keeps me going because I know that there's somebody out there that is very, you know, influenced by what I'm doing. No justice! No, no peace. peace! No justice! No, no peace. peace! When I say black lives, y'all say matter! Black lives! Matter! Black lives! Matter. matter! And there are also people out there that want their voice to be heard, but they can't, you know, get out and do a protest. So it's up to me to kind of organize this thing so that they can feel like their voice is being heard. Cruise for a Cause has even made news coverage for its packed out protests and positive feedback. Cruise for a Cause ATL organizer Perry Simone wanting transparency from the judicial system. They hide stuff from us and it's shielded. And it's like we're supposed to be a country as one, liberty and justice for all, but that's not the case because it's not a transparent system. For as long as I've been doing Cruise for a Cause, I hope that my audience feel as though they've gotten their voice out there and their voice is being heard. and. They're not being hushed or silenced by the pandemic. Jaya Brown, PRN.
You may be familiar with the phrase, the number one station in the streets, and that's home to none other, the streets 945. I got a chance to sit down with the program director, US of Solo. He walked us through his way and how he got to where he is and how he got to be successful in the industry. I went, like most people, you went to college based off of that pre-notion of life is gonna be better if you go to college. After graduating from Clark Atlanta University, Sola immediately began to broaden his networking skills by programming and organizing events for Fortune 500 like companies. With the whole process of all the event planning, it was just something I always did. Mm -hmm. And I always got involved and I rarely said no if I can do it. So um, my, my, my event planning and promoting and marketing side just kind of helped out. You know, you grow, you only get to a bigger stage. And if you're consistent, the people that grow in those areas, they remember you when you did the little mm -hmm. stuff. So they often, they give you an opportunity to do big stuff. Big stuff came very soon for Solo for he landed the program directing job soon later at Streets 94.5. One day I was in the office and the owner of the station at that time, he said, hey, what do you do during the day after you leave? And I was like, nothing. He was like, you don't work or nothing? I was like, nope, I do some stuff at nighttime for the club, but nothing during the day. So, okay. Two weeks later, he, he two weeks later, he offered, he came, offered me a job as a promotions, promotions <coughs> coordinator, um, because the station was starting to get busier and he needed some help with that. And he knew my background was promotions, Club. even though my goal was to get on air. Mm -hmm. Like I was here, I want to be on the radio. Like I want to be holiday. I want to be Greg Street. I want, that's what I wanted to do. Cause I was like, I know so many people. What you may think is right for you may not always be the way things go. And for Solo's case, he found his niche by simply trusting the process. But it's a matter of work ethic, you know. People are not going to invest in you if you're not worth their investment. And if you're trying to get into radio, TV, or anything, figure out what do you bring to the table and then find somebody that needs what you bring to the table. And if you don't know what you bring to the table, then get with people that can help you find out that but then be overworked. Consistency and hard work have been two key major ways that US of Solo, or Solo that is, has made his way in the entertainment and music industry. And that has been a sure way how he's not gonna leave only his mark on the radio world, but the entertainment world as a whole. I'm Manny Lawrence, PRN. Thanks, Jaya. What's up? I'm Antoine Willis, and welcome to PRN Sports. The PRN Sports team would like to dedicate this entire segment to the late baseball legend, Hank Aaron. We will actually kick off the show talking a little bit about Hank's history. Hank Aaron was born on February 5th in 1934 in Mobile, Alabama. In November of 1951, he signed with the Negro Leagues and played for the Indianapolis Clowns. He played so dynamically that he got two offers to play in the MLB. He played in the MLB for 23 seasons and he made his mark in the league. He played here in Atlanta for the Atlanta Braves and he played up in Milwaukee for the Milwaukee Brewers. He hit 715 home runs right here on our campus in the green lot, which used to be an old baseball field for the Atlanta Braves. His 755 career home run ended up breaking Babe Ruth's record. He also hit at least 24 home runs every year from 1955 to 1973. Hank was named fifth on the list for 100 greatest baseball players. Georgia State University will be honoring Hank Aaron. Georgia State will build a baseball complex in this honor where Folding County Stadium used to be. If you take a look at the screen, you can see the new complex will be new and improved. If you would like to pay your respects to the late Hank Aaron, you can do that by going to the green lot. The Green Line will be open for the next few days so fans can come honor him and his legacy. Transitioning into the NFL, we all know that the big game is, up, is this upcoming Sunday. All of us sports lovers simply cannot wait for the game to come. PRN's Koa Ben Israel gives us a little preview on the Super Bowl. The big game is coming right around the corner. The matchup, of course, between the up and coming GOAT in Patrick Mahomes and against the current GOAT, of course, in Tom Brady. And despite the ageless wonder in Brady always being counted out, he just always finds a way to get it done to be able to compete for another championship. Tom Brady was on fire in the first half by throwing for two touchdowns and finishing the game with three overall. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers were not enough to match the firepower of the Buccaneers. It was a little too late for their late comeback effort. 
and the Buccaneers ended up winning the game 31-26. to Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians gave a great amount of credit to Tom Brady for their Super Bowl appearance. Trophy. This trophy, the belief he gave everybody on this organization that this could be done. It only took one man. However, a new dynasty from the AFC is looking to repeat as back-to-back -back champions with Patrick Mahomes leading the front. Despite the Kansas City Chiefs going scoreless in the first quarter in the AFC Championship game, they never looked back after the second quarter. Highlight after highlight, touchdown after touchdown, big play after big play. The Bills' defense had no answer to this juggernaut of an offense and just could not stop the bleeding. Despite their 38-24 victory, Patrick Mahomes knows that the job is not yet finished. Uh, the best thing about this team is we believe in each other, and every single time we hit the field, we leave everything we have. Uh, but the job's not finished. Uh, we're going to Tampa, and we're trying to run it back. The Chiefs and the Buccaneers are in Super Bowl 55, but we all know there can only be one crowned as a Super Bowl champion, Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. Let us know in the comments who you guys have coming out on top. It has been the one and only Cobb in Israel, PRN. <laughs> Thanks, Koa. Well, since the big game is coming up, we want to know what your predictions are. Comment below and let us know which team you think will win and what you think the score will be. That's it for this edition of PRN Sports. I'm Antoine Willis, and you guys stay safe. Gianni Moore is a fashion-forward entrepreneur who attends Georgia State University. She is a senior criminal justice major who plans on becoming an attorney after graduation. Gianni works for one of the top law firms in Atlanta, Mosby Law Firm, as a legal assistant Monday through Friday. When she's not busy at work or hitting the books, she runs her successful clothing brand, Legally Attractive. Legally Attractive is a lifestyle brand that I created to empower women working in the legal field. Um, uh, it means really a lot to me because it's something that I want to do. You know, I'm passionate about the field of law, and that's something that I really want to pursue. And just to be able to, you know, bring in fashion into the field of law is what I look forward to. Juggling school as well as working full time has proven to be a challenge for Gianni, but organizational skills as well as planning has helped her stay on top of things so she never misses a beat. So I definitely plan, plan, plan. I have like a couple apps. Um, Shameless plug. I have Quinoli. It helps me post. So like, I'll do posts before I post them, and then I'll schedule them to post. So like, mm. I'll sit down on the weekend and I'll schedule out like what I'm gonna post for the week, and I'll say like, um, I'm gonna post five posts this week, and I'll have those posts ready, and I'll schedule them for those times because you know I'm at work. I'm not on my phone a lot. A lot of people don't understand. Like I'm literally not on my phone all the time. So um, I'll schedule those posts, and when it's time to post, I make sure they go out. And when asked where she saw Legally Attractive in five to 10 years, Ms. Moore stated that she has big goals and plans for her company and that this is only the mere beginning. Five to 10 years, I see Legally Attractive in somebody's storefront or even my own. I envision expansion, I envision growth, I, I envision. Her final piece of advice to new entrepreneurs was to never give up and stay focused on your journey. Everybody's journey through entrepreneurship is different. Like I said, my first time around, it didn't work out. But it worked around. It worked out the second. Just go at your own pace. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Somebody may move faster than you. Somebody may learn new te techniques faster than you. So just keep, just keep working. Now Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more. So what are you waiting for? Hip Hop Group Tag Team to help.